Hey people, this is Turk72. I found an interesting article from uh, The Guardian about SWAT raids. Now, Guardian is normally a, a left-wing rag, but uh, I think they hit it out of the park on this one. And uh, also displays a study by the ACLU in which they, um, they studied over 800 uh, SWAT raids. So, uh, Kudos to the ACLU for doing some good work this time. So they found that uh, seven civilians were killed and 46 injured in incidents since 2010. So, yeah, the atrocities of these raids are uh, almost too many to list, but I will uh, give it a shot. So, um,. Includes a couple babies or small children being killed by flashbang grenades. Um, so if you haven't uh, seen what a flashbang grenade can do, you might want to look it up on YouTube. Um, again, it's not like a fragmentation grenade, but if you are uh, within, you know, eight feet or so of these things, you are going to be messed up. And it includes... Uh, it uh, can start fires. It's um, um, creates a very flammable effect. So um, there's a baby named uh, Boo Boo who was uh, badly burned by a flashbang grenade when uh, during a raid, and um, um, apparently all the uh, the victims were innocent. A uh, husband was thrown to the ground, baby boo-boo was put uh, in the ICU with bad, badly burned. Um, again, there's numerous uh, occurrences of negligent uh, discharges. I'm not talking about Joe Blow negligent discharge, but ones that actually kill people. So, um... It shows where a, uh, so there's some wonderful SWAT raiders where uh, a grandpa was uh, watching uh, TV. He was uh, thrown to the ground and uh, apparently officer's gun went off and killed him. Uh, you know, he was not a suspect of any kind. Uh, and then there was uh, Jose Guerrera, veteran of the Iraq War, shot 22 times in his kitchen. My SWAT officers searching the neighborhood for drugs. No drugs were found. So, um, so this goes on and on. Uh, I think you get the gist. Um, basically, raiding people's homes is. Uh, very dangerous and there's a quite high likelihood that uh, innocents are going to be injured in the process. So there's been a lot of mission creep. You know SWAT is supposed to be for hostage uh, situations, bank robberies, uh, a barricade situations. So but the ACLU found that 62% a SWAT team callouts were for drug searches. 79% involved private homes. So, um, again, I'm no proponent of illicit drugs. Um, I'm somewhat neutral on marijuana, but obviously, this kind of stuff uh, for a drug dealer. I think is uh, over the top. Um, there's other methods to catch a drug dealer. There's an old-fashioned stake stakeout. You can use uh, get a warrant, do phone taps, do uh, parabolic microphones, um, you know, or just old-fashioned visual stakeout and you know nab these guys outside their home. Um, this kind of stuff is uh, totally ridiculous for 
a drug offender. I don't uh, really care how big time this drug dealer is unless he has hostages or people in immediate danger. Um, yeah, I think this, this stuff is BS. And I think it's no coincidence why all of these accidents happen. I feel it is because the people who actually want to do this stuff, the people who get off on raiding people's homes are obviously mentally defective and that's why all of these uh, accidents happen. People get these guys with um, obviously not enough training and get their itchy trigger finger and um, end up uh, getting innocents killed. I have a couple examples uh, from memory where uh, there was a raid happened and uh, officer accidentally discharged his weapon and killed a uh, young child sleeping on the couch. Um, there was another one when the raid was about to begin Another accidental discharge officer fired into the wrong home and killed the 35-year-old woman. Um, so like I said, the atrocities are pretty much too many to list. Um, you know, these guys need to stop and think what you're doing. Um, go do paintball, go do airsoft, uh, you know, join a three-gun competition, whatever. But stop getting off on raiding people's homes. Um, here's another example. Um, this is from IJR Review. Uh, the EPA, along with uh, DHS, did a raid on a couple who bought a Land Rover. Well, what did they raid them for? an EPA uh, violation. So, um, yes, the uh, emissions of the vehicle or whatever. So apparently this couple bought, uh, I think what they thought was a 1988 Land Rover. And uh, so it turned out the VIN numbers uh, did not match. So they might have accidentally bought a chop shop vehicle or whatever. Their 1988 Land Rover may not have been as old as they thought, and therefore it's under a different EPA regulation. So, the SWAT team uh, decided to raid the home in the wee hours of the morning, which is t totally ridiculous. Um, this is obviously something that uh, even most of the uh, liberals can side on with the people. Um, so, I mean, obviously they just could have just find these people, uh, give them a chance to do restitution before they get raided, please. Of course, they um, probably should not be raided at all in pretty much any type of case like this, but at least give them a chance to pay a fine or do whatever corrects the situation. Uh, before you raid them. So that's my rant on SWAT. Uh, let me know what you think. Oh, before I end it, I was also watching a uh, program recently on uh, John Stossel. Uh, it's called Policing America. So, um, yes, it's Policing America, and on that they had a SWAT commander he said he was on thousands of uh, raids so and he fully admitted that um, when they know that the person is armed and or possibly dangerous that they do not knock before the raid and that the if they do knock the period of time varies and maybe 10 seconds maybe a minute whatever but it appears to be totally arbitrary um, so, and, um, yeah, these people think they're, uh, doing good work. So, uh, again, I'm approaching 10 minutes, uh, 
This is Turk72. Signing off. Let me know what you think about this SWAT madness.